Now that you know how convolution works and how convolution is implemented in MATLAB, in this lecture I'm going to show you a little programming trick. This is not really a kind of core part of doing convolution or data analyses. It's just a little trick that uh, will help you write um, cleaner and more efficient code that will run faster using fewer lines of code. So that's always good. Uh, and the idea is that we start here. So what we want to do um, for real data analyses, you're going to have to run convolution and you, you want to do uh, time frequency analysis for multiple channels, for multiple frequencies, and then of course you have lots of trials. And so when you first write a script to do convolution, you might think that you have to have uh, three loops here. So loop over channels, loop over frequencies, loop over trials. What I'm going to show you here is that we can eliminate the trial loop. So this already gets rid of one of our loops, and this is going to make the code faster and um, easier to read because we're, we have um, uh, fewer loops. That's uh, good not only in terms of um, getting your scripts to be more concise, but also in terms of um, debugging scripts and finding errors in scripts or mistakes. The, the more compact your code is, or the more efficient your code is, the easier it's going to be for you to read it and to uh, modify it. So how do we get rid of this trial loop? Here I'm plotting uh, four individual trials. And the idea is that rather than computing convolution on each trial separately, we can concatenate all these trials together to perform one super trial or to create one super long trial. So you can see here this um, thing goes up and then it starts again on the second trial down here. And here it goes up and it starts again. And so here, this area here is actually the second trial and so on. This is the third trial and the fourth trial. And we're just um, concatenating these four trials to make one very long uh, trial. So now our multi-trial experiment reduces to one trial, uh, and that trial is just really long. So we get this really long trial, um, and then we do convolution or filtering or whatever else, uh, whatever other um, decomposition method you use. From this, now you extract time frequency power. So this is an example of the power time series from this trial at, I don't even know what frequency this is, but it doesn't matter. And after you do this um, convolution with this single super trial, then you cut up this super trial back into its individual trials, and then you average these together. And this procedure is the same as uh, doing the, or gives you the same result as doing the convolution on each trial separately, but it's faster and it's more efficient. So this is, the, this is one of the tricks that we're going to, to use, and I'll show you this in a minute. The second trick that we're going to use is we're going to cut convolution into separate parts. And some of the parts of convolution are going to be done outside of this frequency loop, and some parts of convolution will be done inside this frequency loop. And here you see an advantage of really understanding how convolution works, because um, being able to cut up convolution uh, in this way will save a lot of time um, and it will be faster than just calling the MATLAB conv function. Briefly, the way this works is that, um, so to perform convolution, we need the EEG data and we need the wavelets. Now, the wavelets change on every frequency, uh, so we need to do part of convolution here, but the EEG data don't, do not change within this frequency loop. So once we compute the Fourier transform of the EEG data, we really don't need to compute the Fourier transform again over and over and over again. Uh, you know, if you have 100 frequencies, then having all of convolution be inside the frequency loop means you are computing the Fourier transform of the EG data 100 times when really you only needed to do it once. So, um, so let's let's take a look at the uh, how this is implemented in MATLAB. Okay. So some of this code is standard stuff. Here we load in the data. We're defining our frequencies and a vector of uh, frequencies. In this case, we're only going to do one channel, so we're not going to loop over uh, all the channels. Um, here we define some wavelet parameters. So here I'm uh, going to start a MATLAB timer with tick. Uh, this is going to allow us to time how long these different 
uh, implementations takes in MATLAB. Um, here we define some other parameters that we need. Now I want to draw your attention in particular to this end data. Here I specify that the number of points in the FFT for the data is the number of time points that you have. And this is because we're going to do the convolution separately for each channel. <coughs> here I initialize the time frequency matrix. You can see it is frequencies by time by trials. And of course, if you were also looping over um, uh, channels in this, uh, in this uh, example, then you would have another dimension in here for channels. Okay, so here we loop over frequencies. At each frequency, we create the wavelet, the complex Morley wavelet. We take its FFT and normalize the FFT. And now we loop over trials, and now we get the, um, the Fourier transform of uh, the data just from this trial. So you can see this is eg.data from this channel and all time points and just this one trial. So, and then here's where we perform the, this is the meat of convolution here where we do the um, for frequency spectrum of the wavelet multiplied by the frequency spectrum of the data and then we take the inverse Fourier transform and here's where we cut out the first half of the wavelet from the beginning uh, or half the wavelet from the beginning and half the length of the wavelet from the end. And then here we compute power, that's the magnitude squared. So most of this stuff is old uh, news and you would have come up with something similar had you written this script from scratch. And now here is when we grab the computation time so we can see how long it takes MATLAB to run all of this code between here and here. Okay, and here I just plot the results. So here we see yeah, some nice uh, alpha activity after stimulus onset. The interpretation doesn't really matter. Here now in the second cell, um, this is where we are going to use trial concatenation. And we are going to take advantage of some, uh, yeah, some little tricks to rearrange things to make our code more efficient and a bit faster. So above, uh, we had n data was just the number of time points. But now you can see n data is the number of points times the number of trials. And remember, we need this, uh, we need to specify this because we are going to concatenate all of the trials into one really, really long trial. So how long is that really, really long trial? It is the number of points per trial times the number of trials, of course. All right, now you can see when we initialize this time frequency matrix, we do not need trials anymore because we are going to get rid of trials as soon as we do our average over trials as soon as we do the convolution. So we don't need to store the data for individual trials. This is also useful because it makes the total amount of buffer space that we need to use in, in MATLAB's memory much smaller. So here is part of what makes convolution faster. This was the second hint that I uh, explained in the, in the slides. Here, before we even start getting into the loop in convolution, we can already um, uh, compute the Fourier transform of all the data. Because the Fourier transform of the data is not going to change as we loop over frequencies. So we can do this outside the loop. So here, um, this is, I'm using the function uh, reshape. Here we take all the EEG data from this channel, from all time points, and all trials. So that's uh, this. And now what we're going to do is reshape this into a one by whatever uh, vector. So this, with, if, you give it, uh, if you give reshape an empty um, input like this, it will just uh, uh, reshape to be one by, you don't have to specify however many it needs. We could have specified it would be um, eeg.points times eeg.trials. We could have also specified this as n data. Um, but I will just uh, do this. Okay, so now we this creates one super long trial and then we um, take its Fourier transform. Now we're going to loop um, over frequencies. You can see there's no loop over trials like there was up here. Here we need a separate loop over trials. Here we only need a loop over frequencies. We create the wavelets. And now here we are running convolution with all of the concatenated data. And now here we reshape the data back to be points by trials. And then we can compute the power 
and then immediately thereafter we average over trials. So let's I'll run this first and then we'll look at some of these sizes. So let's see. So we have now um, data X is very long, so it's 64,000 points long because it is one long super trial. Um, and now uh, let's see. Well, when we first run this, you can see that this variable AS this is the analytic signal. This is a long vector. It's 63,360 time points long. And this is, uh, so this is, let's go back here. So now we have this, this variable AS is now this long thing. And now what we want to do is cut this back up into a two dimensional matrix. And that's what we're going to do here. We reshape it to be um, time by trials. And now we end up with a familiar looking 640 by 99 matrix. And that's why we now take the mean over the second dimension because the second dimension is trials. Okay, so let's see how long these two functions took. So you can see each trial, so I mean, they're both quite fast, right? They're both less than a half a second to do the whole thing. This is a toy example because we have a very small sample data set. Um, but this time, difference in uh, time will, will grow to be larger with more and more data, uh, in particular with more and more trials. Um, but also you can see that this, even aside from, uh, from this difference in computation time, this code is, um, is more efficient. It, it looks nicer. There's fewer lines of code. There are fewer points where you can get uh, confused and potentially make a mistake compared to this line of code or this um, section of code, which is more complicated, has more, um, more uh, information in there, more things going on. Okay, so now let's look and see what these two time series look like. So here you see the power from 5 hertz uh, from each trial separately. So that's the first cell and all the trials concatenated. That's the second cell. They look, you know, basically identical. There are, of course, extremely tiny differences. Um, and I'll show you where these differences come from. If we comment out line 121, uh, which defines the X limit, and then you run this again, you can see that uh, there's something happening at the beginning and at the end of the time series. Uh, these are edge artifacts. So you tend to get um, edge artifacts with this approach because you are um, going from this va value here down to this value here, and this is a sharp edge. Um, edge artifacts are something that you may have heard of before. Here you see basically what an edge artifact is. Um, I'm going to have a whole lecture on edge artifacts in the future, so we will discuss these in more depth. Uh, but if you have uh, fairly long epochs, then you actually don't need to worry about these edge artifacts. They will be in your data, but they don't matter because this is the time period that we actually care about. Um, and so the edge artifacts do not contaminate our, uh, our results. So I hope you found this useful. This is just a, uh, a few little MATLAB pointers to help you write um, more efficient code.